welcome to our Mixed Media Moods for May. Jen and I are super excited to be here. We are a little bit late with this, but it's only because we've been planning some super fabulous things. Not sure if you're aware, but coming up in July is our one-year anniversary already. Neither Jen or I can believe we've been doing this this long. So stay tuned in the video and in our, our Facebook group and on our blogs because we have some really exciting announcements coming up. Uh, here at the beginning of this video, so back to May, this challenge is really exciting and I, Dee, Dee worked on this board. I love it. I love the mustard color and then I paired it this time with navy, which is really cool and like bright and fun, especially with a pop of white. Um, so I started with a stack of ephemera and some jelly prints that I had. I specifically did a jelly printing session for this mood board because I loved the color combination so much. And then I pulled out a canvas board from Blick and all of these links will be in the video description as well as on my blog. So be sure to check those out if you have any specific questions about supplies. Um, Cause this, these videos are more about techniques rather than the exact supplies. Like I'm not talking a lot about the wood board. Though the wood boards are really cool because they have this huge edge to them. It's like an inch and a half tall. Um, and then I, I went through those jelly prints and I picked out two that had less patterns than the others. And they these two jelly prints are more about kind of like color blocking and just color application uh, because I really wanted to set the intention for my piece. So I didn't want to concentrate on patterns. I wanted to get a mix of the colors, that beautiful navy and that kind of mustard yellow from the mood board. And then using some golden heavy matte medium, and a brush, I have applied these jelly prints to my board. I did trim them down, and uh, then I glued those down with the heavy matte medium, and I made sure that, or the, it is matte, but heavy gel medium, because it is really thick. I made sure that I had gotten all the edges and the corners down nice and tight specifically. I didn't, it's not that I didn't mind specifically about the middle portion. It's just that I knew I was going to keep layering on top of it. And uh, this helped. It, that will help keep everything sort of anchored. Then from there, I'm pulling back out my like kind of like stack of goodies. Some of it is vintage ephemera, like that little page with the handwriting on it comes from a vintage um, invoice or a vintage memo book. It's so stinking cool. And it was written in a blue black pen. So then when I applied clear gesso to the top of that page, the blue black bled a little bit and then it kind of has that midnight tone to it. It's really nice. Um, this part of the process is really more about kind of stacking things and putting them on, on top of each other and taking them off. And, and I refer to this type of stuff as the song and dance because you put some on, you take some off, you put some on, you take some off. And I left almost, I would say like two thirds of that process in the video for you because it's very personal and there's a lot of personal preference involved like what do I like I love raggedy edges um, and things like that so I always make sure to tear my edges rather than to cut them it, it adds to the authenticity I think is a good word um, for me to use and I keep saying personal preference because it is and in this piece of artwork is really beautiful to me and speaks to me because it's what I, it's the things that I love I'm expressing myself but um, what I want to say, the reason I keep saying that is because I can give you some tips and tricks, which I love to do, to help your artwork also be aesthetically pleasing to others. And especially if you're kind of doing the song and dance and things don't seem to really be working out, I have some tricks or some tips that might help you achieve more the look you're looking for. So one of those things is to rip the edges especially when it comes to mixed media and sort of collaging and stacking and layering, rip the edges. That really, really helps. The other thing is sometimes it's really good to stay in sort of a monochromatic theme. So I'm working in these tans and off-whites, but then I'm supplementing in some really darker tones of some other vintage text that I also had lying around. So I started with the creams and sort of lighter whites that came from the mood board and then I also supplemented in some really vintage toned tan ones and it's not necessarily every other layer but every maybe 
third layer. And then that really helped kind of create this beautiful layered paper look. Then I just did a quick stitch down the middle and set that to the side. Now I have out some gesso and I have gesso by all kinds of companies and sometimes I kind of go back to my favorites but that doesn't mean that others aren't good either. So specifically on this one I wanted to use Golden's gesso because it's nice as well as the Liquitex and the Blick version that I usually use. Um, so I scraped some gesso on with a clean palette knife and I did make sure that it was clean because then I could control the application process a little bit better. Now keep in mind, when I was collaging those jelly prints down to my wooden block, I did not go over the top of them as a collage. I only matte mediumed between the paper and the wood board. Then I scraped with gesso and let that dry. Then I got out my handy dandy Stabilo Marks All pencil and I kind of went around the edges of my board after everything was dry and then I wet it with a paintbrush and by doing that and kind of spreading it out the gesso acts a little bit as a resist and then wherever that more like raw paper is then the it soaked up that stabilo and got really grungy and dark and it's cool it's such a cool process so um and I was telling Jen just a couple weeks ago after watching um a Robin Marie video it was like like, whoa, like the difference is insane by how you treat your paper. So if you have your raw paper exposed, then it's really going to soak up some grunginess really, really easily. But if, you, if you're collaging and you cover the top with matte medium, then you've created a barrier and that grungy effect is a little bit harder to achieve. So keep that in mind when you're working and then it will help you achieve the differences that you want in your artwork. So sometimes it's good totally to collage everything down and be secure and then sometimes it's better to leave some of those raw edges and surfaces on the forefront. I did paint the edges of the board with gesso and then I scraped back over some of the gesso to make it a little bit brighter where it had gotten grungy from that stabilo. So now I had that grungy paper in the background with a little bit of gesso and all this stuff is really coming together. Now this sort of like chunky kind of weird thing that's in the middle this is a silk casing um, from the cocoon of a silkworm. And this is kind of what's left over after they have harvested the silk to turn into yarns and fibers and things. So I picked up a huge section of these and they are basically just like off casting of a really cool process to make silk. So I love them. It's kind of like a long tube that's been slit in the middle and it's wonderful completely completely wonderful I have a huge bag of them I just got them in the mail and now I can't wait to use them on all kinds of projects especially because I love incorporating natural elements into all of my pieces sometimes it's sticks sometimes it's rocks it's in this case it ends up being this like silkworm casing kind of cool piece I did apply my collaged little stack of papers with that same matte gel medium I've been using and uh, then I got out my Stabilo, the same one I've been using, and I started to darken up the stack a little bit. Sort of my little like layered embellishment, but it's really big. So I don't know if it's considered an embellishment. But now I am honing the focus of my whole piece in towards this sort of middle area. And I did really like how that Stabilo was turning out. And then I got out the gesso. Um, one of the really cool tips I picked up from other people is if you have these golden jars and you kind of shake them before you open the paint, as long as your lid is on nice and tight, then when you open it, you can use the paint directly from the lid. It's so cool. Then you can just kind of set the whole pot off to the side and you don't ever have like too much paint and there's not a bunch of paint waste sort of laying around. So then one of my favorite tips to share is the end of your paintbrush, like the back end, is as much a tool as the front end. And I love to use mine to create these sort of uneven, more whimsical dots all over my page. So, or project or mixed media or altered art or whatever I'm working on. So using that brush, I dipped it into the paint and then kind of moved it all around the board. And from the left and the right hand side, it was thicker and then it kind of came in and focused in towards the middle. Uh, now I've kind of been playing with this silk casing, trying to figure out exactly how I want to attach it. In all reality, I probably, if I had thought further ahead, I would have stitched it onto the stack of paper 
before I glued it down. But I didn't do that. Hindsight is always 50-50. Then while I was sort of playing with it, I ended up ripping it. And at first I was really upset and I was trying to sort of like put it back together. And then I thought, it's okay. It's part of the process. Just go with it. It's a natural element and you can't always control that. So I set it to the side and I got out this um, paint by Dina Wakely. It's called Night and it's the color that I used in the jelly printing and it's beautiful. So I couldn't not use it. So I darkened up sort of that stack of of goodness of vintage ephemera just right in the middle and now I'm going to apply this beautiful yellow DMC floss to the silk casing because it, underneath it there's a slit in the back and I'm not exactly sure about the whole process of making silk I plan to research it so I can know exactly what piece I I bought and am using from the process but there's a slit in the back where I think they removed the silk on the inside and then I am using that slit to go up through the um, top of the casing and I am using the DMC floss to make a French knot. So these beautiful little French knots that are really popular in embroidery. Uh, after I learned them a few months ago, I can't stop putting them on everything and they are just superb. They're such a cool way to add dimension and texture. And I end up kind of having trouble with this last one, but that's okay. Because it just gives me a quick little chance to talk to you about what's coming up. So Jen and I now, because we've totally been on the ball with everything, <laughs> are going to start also doing weekly videos for you with our Mixed Media Moods. So keep an eye out for those and we'll have some smaller but just as fun techniques coming to you weekly. And then in July, we're going to have a huge big bash starting at the end of the July for our first month, all completely full of inspiration. So because we're still kind of working out the details, I want to stop right there with that information, but just keep that in the back of your mind. Uh, I, after I was back to the project, after I was done with the DMC floss and the French knots, then I just uh, tied that DMC into a knot on the back to secure it all. And I put my little silkworm casing down with the matte medium. Mm -hmm. So everything there is done and that's the finished piece. You can check out more of the shots here. And uh, thank you so much for following us. Be sure to join our Facebook group. I would love if you would subscribe to my channel, getting back into the groove of creating videos and inspiring you guys. And it's always, it always makes me so happy. And uh, I'll see you around for the next video. Thank you.